Hey everyone, welcome to Wicode. In this video, we're going to learn how to set up MongoDB using Docker. We'll go over creation scripts, security, data persistence, and more. So first, why Dockerize MongoDB? So benefit of Dockerizing Mongo is that it avoids the headache of installing and configuring database servers. Docker containers are available that are specifically designed to support MongoDB, allowing us to skip all the installation. Also, using a Docker container for Mongo provides a consistent and isolated environment that can be distributed and ran in different environments. But so enough of that, let's actually have some demonstration now. And what we're going to do is first, we're going to be using Mongo version 7.0.7 .7 as the base image as a demonstration for this video. Now let's create an initial Mongo database. And we can do this by using the environment variable mongo init db database. If we don't supply a value to this environment variable, then mongo will create a database called test by default. So this environment variable is used by the mongo image under the hood to create a default database. And if we don't use one, it'll create one called test. And of course, mongo works by creating a database the first time it is used, but creating the database here makes it so creation scripts are ran against this database as opposed to the default test database. And so this is a good time to talk about creation scripts. So creation scripts are .sh or .js files that are placed inside a folder called, let me show you right here, called docker entry point initdb.d. So creation scripts are .sh or .js files placed inside this folder in the Mongo image. And creation scripts are used for data initialization, or database initialization, such as authentication, collection creation, data insertion, and things like that. So if we want to have a creation script, which of course we're going to do, we're going to paste or copy a file called init.js into this location. So let's create this file. So it's just called init.js. And inside this script, what we're just going to do is we're going to create a collection called subscriber just like this, and then we're going to insert a record into it. So this DB object here, because um, it kind of looks like it comes from no, comes out of, out of nowhere, this DB is a Mongo database object that's used by the Mongo DB shell. And we'll see that actually in action in a little bit. But before we do that, let's go back into here and talk about security. So the default Mongo configuration is not secure as there is no authentication required for access. However, using environment variables again, we can set a root username and password. So I'm going to paste these in here. And once again, these names are very, for this to work, the environment variables that are set need to be this one here and this one here. So mongo initdb root username and mongo initdb db root password. And these environment variables create a new user and set their password. And specifically, this user is given the super user root role and is added to the admin authentication database. To create a user with lef less privileges, we would have to use um, this creation script. But so that's really all there is. Now let's just focus on building this image using this Docker file. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build an image, and I've already created this before, so I'm gonna call it mongo-i version 2.0.0. So let's build this. Now if we list our images, let's just see this is here. So I've got tons of other images from personal projects and stuff, but we can see Mongo I version 2.0.0 created six seconds ago. Now let's create a container from this image, and we can do this by using the docker run command. And I'm going to call this Mongo C-2, and then we're going to map port, I'm going to do 8999 on our local host machine to 27017 which is where MongoDB runs by default. And we're gonna create this from the Mongo image version two. However, before we run this command, let's create a Docker volume to ensure that the data that we place inside MongoDB is persisted even when the container is destroyed. So to persist data stored inside a Mongo image, we need to use Docker volumes. Specifically, we need to create a volume pointing to the directory. Let me show you actually by pasting it here to the directory dash data dash db. So we've created a volume here called Mongo V and we've mapped it to this location. So now when we create different containers from this image, our data will be persisted if we apply this Mongo V volume. Actually, I already have this volume created, so I'm gonna name it Mongo V2, but let's run this to get this up and running. 
And so now our container's up and running. We can see all sorts of logs. Um, but what we want to do is actually make sure everything worked. We're going to do this by going inside our, our Docker container. We're running Mongo SH against it, so a Mongo shell. So this right here, Mongo SH, stands for MongoDB shell, and it's a JavaScript and Node environment for actor interacting with MongoDB. So now that we're in here, let's switch to our admin database. So we can see this test one that's used by default, but we want to go over to admin, and inside here, we want to authenticate ourselves using a username and password, which is of course what we set here. So if we run db.auth, we can see we've authenticated ourselves. So we get back OK1. And of course, this username and password comes from what we provide to these two environment variables. So in this db.auth function, the first argument is the username, and the second one is the password. And this db object that we're using is the same one that is inside our creation scripts. But now let's switch back to the database we created, which is called mydb. And then let's access our subscriber collection. And we'll just do dot find, just find like this. And we can see what we inserted here. It's a subscriber printed out to the console. But so this is all you really need to know to get started with MongoDB and Docker. I want to thank you for liking and subscribing and consider downloading my Chrome extension called Witceptor if you like this video. Besides that, leave your comments or questions in the comments below. And I hope to see you in the next one. Have a good one.